gonna take some poblano chilies. And I think I'm gonna make green chili cheeseburger, something that I first really got into when I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my green chilies on the fire because I can actually cook these way ahead of time. So I just want them to be ready so that when my burgers come you know, hot off the grill, I can just garnish them with the cheese and the, and the green chilies. So I'm gonna fire roast my green chilies just by putting a little canola oil and some salt and pepper on there and just getting them on the grill. What I want to happen here is to get the, uh, the skin to start to blister and it will get that nice charred color and flavor and I can actually take the skin off and then take the seeds and the stems out and I'll just have the flesh of the green chili and I can lay it right on top of the burger. I have my patties in my refrigerator just to let them get cold. So I just put a little canola oil on top, just a very light brushing, and then some salt and pepper. And now we can just go over to the grill. Okay? And the idea is to only turn these one single time. And we want them to get nice and crusty, let the grill do its job, and then we can garnish them later on. This is the way I like to cook burgers. Really simple, good, good chopped meat, a good amount of fat in the chopped meat, somewhere between 80 to 85% meat to fat, and then uh, season them really well and let them grill. And then all the flavors come in the condiments. I have some provolone cheese here. You know, it's a fairly mild cheese. It's a great melting cheese. If you can't find provolone, Monterey Jack would work really well. You know, or like a white cheddar or even a yellow cheddar is totally fine. I always like provolone and Monterey Jack better just because I feel like it melts better. I like really good melted cheese on my burgers. And I have to have toasted buns on my hamburgers. So I'm gonna take a little bit of oil and just brush the inside of my hamburger bun just a little bit. And in fact, you know, I treat the bun like anything else. I season it, I salt and pepper it a little bit. Plenty of room. This is gonna go pretty quickly, so you can't go anywhere now. That's what you wanna see. Slightly toasted. Now these are poblano chili, so they're not very spicy. They just have a great pepper flavor. And then by the time this cheese melts, you should have some perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Cover the grill, and that's how you melt the cheese. Very important to melt the cheese all the way. I can't stand half-melted cheese on burgers. It's just, it's just not the same. You know, you just gotta let it go for that extra 20 or 30 seconds. It makes all the difference in the world. Welcome to Green Chili Cheeseburger Land. That's what I'm talking about. That looks real good, Bobby. Thank Smells you. Smells really good from here. I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot sauce to give it a little moisture. I mean, you know, you can always just kind of throw a burger on the grill, throw some American cheese on it, and, you know, it'll be perfectly fine. But just a little extra effort, you know, just to do something a little different, you know, why not? We're making a burger tape, and I'm gonna show you how simply I season my burger. We don't wanna over mix the burger. We don't wanna work with the burger too much. We want it to be um, sort of just formed together. What I like to do is take my thumb, you've seen me do this before, and, and just make a well in the middle of the burger. I do that because I'm kind of faking out the burger. Uh, when I put the burger on the grill, what's gonna happen? It's gonna sort of plump up and almost become like a football. And what I don't wanna do is then walk over there and take the back of my spatula and push it down to the shape that I want because I'm gonna lose all the juices. So we're gonna preempt that. And we're going to make a well in the burger so that when it actually cooks, it's gonna come back to the shape that we want. I like to make my burgers around six ounces and also not too thick. Move on to the turkey burgers. Turkey burgers have become very, very popular lately. It's about 90% meat to about 10% fat. Same thickness, same weight, and same technique. Obviously, it's gonna be a little bit drier than beef. You really need to sort of walk the line in terms of how much you cook it. Obviously, it has to be cooked all the way through. Here's all my seasoning. Salt, freshly ground black pepper, that's it. And I season very liberally on both sides because this is gonna create flavor, but it's also gonna help form a crust on the outside of the burgers. I'm gonna take a little bit of canola oil. All right, let's go to the grill. Hot part of the grill. Our turkey burgers. Let's get back to the basics here. So, we wanna flip these burgers one time. Want them to get nice and crusty on one side, flip them, let them cook through. I like my beef burgers around medium. It's just always the way I've eaten them. 
Let's check our burgers. All right, nice and crusty. Turkey burgers. Look at that. See, the turkey burgers were a little bit closer to the high heat. They got even a nicer crust than the beef burgers. And if you notice, they didn't stick to the grill. Why? Because I left them alone. I just let them cook on their own. So I'm gonna use two different kinds of cheeses. For the beef burgers, I'm gonna use American. And then for the turkey burgers, what should I use, Swiss? Let's do pepper jack, why not? This way I'll be able to identify which burger is which. Our beef burgers, two slices of American cheese. Because a lot of times the American cheese is sliced kind of thinly. Close the grill, 15, 20 seconds, something like that. Because uh, we want this cheese to become part of the burger, just like this. Cheeseburger, American cheese, coleslaw with Russian dressing, some chipotle ketchup, a little bit of uh, potato chips. We're gonna cover our, our burger. You can hear the crunch, just like that. Mm. The word that comes to mind is satisfying. That's exactly what you want. Now I'm gonna make a Louisiana burger. So we're gonna start with sweet paprika, a little cayenne pepper. Then we have some onion and some garlic powder, dried thyme, black pepper, some salt. Mix that up. All right, so I'm gonna start on my remoulade with a good quality mayonnaise and then some mustard, whole grain, and some Dijon, some salt and pepper. Whisk that up, some green onions, then some fresh parsley. Louisiana hot sauce, and I'm gonna whisk that up. In my burger, I take the patty, I take my thumb, uh -huh. and I make a well in the burger. So I'm gonna take a little bit of canola oil, and I'm just gonna brush the burger just a tiny bit so that the spice rub stays on it. The salt and pepper, and then the spice rub. So now I'm gonna put the burger's spice side down. You see that? Ooh, okay. Nice and crusty uh -huh. on the outside, and the spice rub has really become part of the, of the burger. I actually have tasso ham. I just wanted to get some heat through it. All right, so I'm gonna take my tasso ham off, and I'm just gonna put half a slice of ham on each one of the burgers, and I'm gonna cover it up with our pepper jack cheese. So I'm toasting my hamburger rolls here. I forgot to do one thing in our remoulade. I actually forgot to put cornichons in here, so I'm gonna put a little remoulade on the bottom of the bun. Let's check on our burgers. See, that one looks good. All right, so I'm gonna put a little remoulade right on top of the burger here. I like contrast of texture, so I put very thin, crisp potato chips on my burger. The idea is to kind of crunch it down. The mustard's in the remoulade. There's two different mustards in there. The crunch is key. Hey, everybody, I'm Bobby Flay, and today we're making burgers. Now, I think of burgers as the quintessential sandwich. Each component must be treated with the utmost respect to get the perfect result. Now, at my burger place, Bobby's Burger Palace, I do a signature burger called the Crunch Burger. It's a burger with double cheese and potato chips on the burger for that extra crunch. It's the best burger there is. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually make a burger, and uh, let me just show you how I do that. Usually about uh, six or seven ounces of, of chopped meat. 80% meat to 20% fat is what I like to use, because I like to have a little flavor in my burger, and the flavor is gonna come from the fat. Tuna or salmon patties also make a great crunch burger. And here's a little trick that I do. I just make a little well with my thumb in the middle of the burger, and then when the burger cooks, it actually comes back to shape. Otherwise, you're gonna have this big sort of hump on the burger, and then what happens is people take the back of their spatula, and they press it down to get it back to the shape, and that's when you lose all the juiciness. We're gonna season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I'm just gonna brush it with a little bit of uh, light oil, just so it doesn't stick to the grill. I'm gonna find a hot part of the grill, and drop it on, just like that. And I like to turn my burger one time, and the reason why is because you can see, you get that nice crust on the outside of the burger. Let's talk about how we're gonna garnish our burger. Now, this is all optional, but let's do the classic. A slice of beautiful beefsteak tomato, a thin slice of red onion, and then some lettuce. A good crunchy lettuce, something like romaine works really well. All right, so now, cheese. This is actually gonna be a Monterey Jack, and I'm using two slices of cheese. I always make, I always use double cheese, especially when I'm making a crunch burger. The key to cheese is melt the cheese completely. It drives me crazy when I go to a burger place and they don't melt the cheese. There's something about melted cheese on a burger, to me, that makes the burger. And one more thing, we're gonna make a little horseradish mayonnaise. We're just gonna take a good quality mayonnaise and then a good amount of horseradish. 
and some salt and pepper. Just mix this up. Okay, there are burgers. I'm gonna take a little bit of our horseradish mayonnaise right on top. And then a couple of our potato chips. Press it down slightly. Can you start to hear the crunch? There it is. Crunchification at its best. Mmm. That's a good burger. Welcome back. You're watching Grill It. I'm Tassa Hampton. I'm grilling here with Bobby. All right. It's all about turkey burgers on the grill. Tassa made her famous turkey cornucopia burgers. Yes. And they look fantastic. So I'm going to uh, assemble my turkey burgers. This is just ground turkey. What I like to do with my burgers is I just like to uh, keep them uh, actually nice and pure. Just uh, the ground turkey, some salt and pepper, a little bit of uh, canola oil or vegetable oil on the outside, and then we let them grill. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my burger with the uh, hot paprika aioli spread, and then we're gonna layer it with some alfalfa sprouts and avocado and tomato. Now, is there any reason why you're just doing all white meat? Um, actually, there's, there's a little dark meat in here as well. Oh, there is? Yeah, okay. just, a, just a tiny bit of dark meat as well. It's actually a very good question. I think that, you know, the dark meat has a little bit more moisture in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it keeps it nice and moist, and of course, it's gonna give it some more flavor. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of canola oil and brush the canola oil right on top of the burgers. A little salt and pepper on both sides. And we can get these on the grill. I noticed you only season the outside of the patties. Yes. What, what happens is the salt and pepper actually helps it form a crust on the outside. Oh. And, and hopefully uh, the idea is to sort of seal in the juices. Now remember, it's turkey, so we're not cooking these medium rare. Right. They have to be cooked <laughs> all the way through. So we want to seal in as much juice as we possibly can. So I am also going to toast my hamburger rolls. That's the way to do it. Got to do it, don't you think? <laughs> Definitely. All right. Now, the, uh, the bun shouldn't really take too long. I mean, literally, you know, maybe 30 seconds. You have to be really careful, depending on how hot your grill is. All right, my burgers are ready, but Bobby, before we actually try them, I'm gonna get started on my, my kebabs. Okay, and these are, this is your caprese kebabs, right? Yes. Fresh mozzarella, tomato. Basil Some with a balsamic basil. reduction. Oh, nice. So now I'm gonna assemble some kebabs here. And I use metal just because it's easier. You don't have to pre-soak it uh -huh. in, in water like you would with... You and you know, can reuse them too. The wood, exactly. Mozzarella. Are you singing? <laughs> awesome. I didn't know you could sing. Are you a good singer? Um, some would, would say. Really? <laughs> okay. You're showing us some of your skills. I like that. <laughs> you don't want to hear me sing. I'm going to stick to the grill. <laughs> oh, come on. It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to turn these now. And that's what you want to see. Nice and crusty on the outside. Let them finish cooking. So I'm gonna take, uh, on the bottom of our buns, I'm gonna take a little bit of our honey mustard Mario lemon sauce. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, it's really pretty. And it tastes really good. It's a little sweet, a little spicy, a little citrusy. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually start putting a little goat cheese on the burger now and let it start to warm up on the grill while the rest of it cooks through. I love goat cheese. That looks great. I can't wait to try it. So basically the idea is the goat cheese will warm up, sort of, uh, warm itself all the way through. By the time the burger's cooked, we'll be good to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and brush the uh, olive oil, brush mm -hmm. my kebabs, and I'm just gonna put a little salt and pepper, and then they're ready to go on the grill. And I'm gonna cover them so that the cheese gets all nice and melted. Oh, it's a trick, so you put the tin foil down? Yes. Okay, Easy why do you cleanup. do that? Easy, Easy cleanup. cleanup. Okay, the cleanup part, not my favorite deal. Never. I'm actually gonna get my balsamic reduction started right now. Okay. Just gonna eyeball about a cup, and that should reduce down to a nice syrup. All right, I think these are done. And whenever you're ready, I've got a burger set aside for you, and I hope you like it. I'm ready. All right. Nice. The Tassa Cornucopia Turkey Burger. <laughs> Did you get the that The spices are coming at you. Whoa! <laughs> What's great about this is it's got great flavor. The turkey is sort of like the canvas for all these flavors that you have going on. And then you have all those spices, and then you have the freshness from the avocado and the, and the, and the tomato. All works. California style. Even the sprouts. <laughs> this is great, though. Oh, thanks. All right, I have to return the favor. And we're going to put some of our, our sauce right on top. And for some uh, freshness and a little bit of crunch, watercress. 
There we go. Yeah, I, to me, that's like perfectly wow, cooked. Wow, cooked all the way meaty. through, but at the same time, it's still a little juicy. Mm. Give it a shot there. Okay. Mm. That is juicy and delicious. And the goat cheese comes out. It's so fresh, but that the slight sweetness. The honey and the mustard. Yeah, I mean, I, to me, that to me, that's it works. What makes it. It works well with the goat cheese. It's delicious.